My name is Will. I'm part of the Ripple Effect family. And I'm going to do a quick demonstration for you guys today uh, showing how different types of soil hold water. Um, you can do this with some really simple materials um, that you probably have around the house already. One is just dirt. You can go in your backyard and get that or go to a neighbor's. Um, the other types of materials are some pebbles or rocks and sand. Um, sand might be a little trickier to find, but I think you can probably think of some places where you might be able to find that. Um, you'll also need three different vessels or cups. Um, you can do this with toilet paper rolls, which we tend to have around a lot these days, um, or you can use plastic water bottles and cut holes in the bottom, or old Mardi Gras cups would work too. Uh, but they, the key is that they're the same size and they hold the same amount of, um, of material. Um, the other thing you'll need is some water. And um, we're going to need three cups with equal amounts of water to, to make this work properly. And I'll flip around and show you exactly what I mean. I just have three disposable cups, again with equal amounts of water, and then three little planters with, um, with the different types of soil in it. And beneath each one I've got a little dish that will collect our water and allow us to measure afterwards to see which substance held the most water. Uh, the answer to this question about which soil type holds more water is important because out in the real world we need to know this answer as well. When we're talking about erosion, there are certain substances that we might use that would be better suited to preventing erosion than others. Now, when you look at your materials, which one do you think would have the most ability to hold water? I think in my case, among the three, it's probably going to be the dirt because there's less air between the particles um, of matter there. And as we know, air doesn't hold water. Um, so I'm gonna test this right now, and I hope you follow along with me and do it at home. First, we're gonna start with the rocks. As you can see, there's some nice little pebbles. Here's my, my hand to give you a sense of scale. And we're gonna take one of those glasses of water, and we're gonna pour it over. And as you can see, the water just goes right down there into the plate. Almost all of it. The rocks are a little damp, but it didn't really hold much water. Now let's try the sand and see if we have a different result. It's pretty tightly packed sand, but you know, sand is basically just ground up rocks. So we might expect a similar result. But as you can see, it does hold some of that water. Not a lot goes through, but it sort of shrinks down and hardens up as the water saturates it, and it keeps some of it in there. Now we can move to the soil and see what kind of effect the water has on it. See, it's so densely packed, the water sort of sits on top for a second. And we'll have to wait for it to go down. Pour the rest of the water into the, the garden soil. As you can see, it's still sitting on top because that, that dirt is so dense and packed tight. Um, but you can also see that it's kind of turned into a sludgy, muddy mix that you might expect in your garden after a rain. Um, so as you can see, um, compared to the other materials, it's held quite a bit more water. I thought that the dirt would hold more water and that proved to be the case. Again, this is really important for um, questions of erosion and the larger environment. So um, I hope you get out and experiment with these soil types and, um, and then let us know what you find. We'll see you in the next video in our series at Ripple Effect.